Secrets, all right, secrets. Can't let it out of this room, okay? The number one complaint of users is click. They don't want to click. Y'all heard that before? Amen. Oh, man. <laughs> we, oh, can I get a witness? <laughs> they don't want to click. And so, as, as I'm listening to George's presentation and re reliability stuff, and I'm all for it, He's introducing more clicks. <laughs> and so it's a double-edged sword. I, I want fewer clicks, but I want to get more done. So that's what this block of instruction is about. Tools. These are the things that are built into EAM to help you make it user-friendly. And, and I'm sure you guys already know this. User setup. At the user setup screen, there's some do's and don'ts that you want to do. All right, we'll talk about those. Data spies. Is there anywhere in the application where you see a data spy that has a label? This is a data spy. No, it's just given. It's just there. Screen designer. I'm sure everybody's played around with screen designer. It's my best friend. I love screen designer. Start center items like inboxes, KPIs, and charts. We'll talk about those. System codes. There's some things you got to do in system codes to help get um, user-friendly. Screens and screen permissions. I'm sure you guys know this as well. How many times you have a user that wants to look at something and the tab is not always displayed, but he's going to it all the time and he's just living with it because he doesn't have an admit system administrator that knows he's doing it and he don't put in a ticket, he just lives with it. The other is install parameters. There's a few install parameters that are very important to making the application user-friendly. Now, what we're going to talk about is the user setup stuff. Use screen designer. When you get to the user setup screen, turn on your screen designer and unhide some fields. You want to check allow data spy edits for all users. Now, that's unless you've got a user that can mess up a gravel pile. You know, you might not want them to be able to edit um, data spies, but most, most users, you do want to do that. Do not, and I feel like I'm preaching to the choir, do not allow global data spy configuration to anybody other than the system administrator. They could hurt you. Do not check allow data spy advanced filters unless it's a system administrator or a code writer. And then if it is a code writer, you supervise the heck out of them to make sure uh, they don't mess your system up or drag your, drag your data down. Check always contains search and data spy and quick filter for all users. Now, why, don't, why do you think they did that a few years ago? They come up with you have to unhide always contains search and then you have to check it and then there's an install parameter for it also. Isn't that weird? You, you would think that would not be hidden out of the box, but it is. All right, the other one, which I'm a huge fan, is check enable screen cache deck. Wasn't that the greatest thing since sliced bread? <laughs> Wasn't that the greatest thing? More uh, user setup stuff, the success message timeout. I, I've, I went to a customer a couple of weeks ago in Georgia, and every one of their success messages, it was until, until okayed, and it bunched up, and it like drives me crazy seeing that. Be courteous to your users, and when you bring a new user on, set it to five seconds and make him aware that he can change it, him or her, they can change it. Now, set session timeout minutes. I'm sure everybody in this room has dealt with that before. There is an install parameter for that, W timeout, and it by default is 15. Well, the values, which is stated in the install parameter, says you can go to, from 15 to 960. Uh, and at the user setup, even though you have a default on the install parameters, you can overwrite that with the user setup. You can jack it up. But since most users are named users, it's not a real big thing, but occasionally I hear complaints about that. Now, here's a fun one too. Select 
and add a department for that user that has a default store if it's possible. You can't always do that if you have multiple stores, all right? But if it's possible, do it. So when the user goes to do an issue return transaction or something like that, the store will populate automatically for him. Guess what? That's less clicks he has to do, and you've made him happy. That's what system administrators are supposed to do. And believe it or not, I see this a lot, employee records that are not tied to a user record. All right, I can understand having employees that don't ever log into the application at all. But if they have a user profile, the employee record needs to be tied to that user record with the associated user field, even if they're only a mobile user. I mean, it's more important if they are a mobile user. Don't miss that one. Believe it or not, I run into people that miss that. Data spies. Data sp I remember when I first uh, saw D7i back in the day, and I was in a class, and he said, data spy, data spy, data spy. I said, what the hell is a data spy? Uh, it's not labeled anywhere, but it is probably the most important component in the application. Now, everybody knows, man, I think everybody knows, a fresh install of EAM has basically one or two, maybe three data spies, all right? And the layout is questionable. You don't know what's there. What you need to do, oh, before I get carried away here, uh, everywhere there is a screen that has a magnifying glass on it, that's a data spy. And you've seen them. They're all over the place. Every user can select one default data spy. Data spies have filters, sort, layout, and advanced filters. You know that, all right? I'm not I'm preaching to the choir. Train users thoroughly on data spies. Man, I can't tell you how many sites I've been to that they just don't take the time to do that. That is critical that you do that. Now, if you've got good users, they'll figure it out and they'll do it. All right, but your common user has to be spoon-fed and you have to work with them. And when I say on here, especially run, I'm talking about that little button on the bottom right side of a data spy where you make a temporary data spy. Now, when you're searching for parts and you know that it's a pillow block bearing whatever, this is where the data spy comes in handy. Description contains or description contains, or description contains, and whatever you do, don't hit save, hit run. Does anybody remember Joe Mandracia of Invoco? Anybody? I was working with him way back in the day, and he gave me one of my sayings. He's saying he was working in EAM, and it gave him the finger. That cracked me up. I've been using it ever since, and people think it's kind of funny. Some people don't. All right. <laughs> Data spies continued. I know this slide might be kind of hard to see, but what I'm showing you on here, stuff you already know, that my work orders has this little uh, multi system type not equal to mul multiple equipment child work orders. You'll see that by default in the application because who wants to look at child work orders that you can't do anything with? Sometimes you do, huh? but very rarely. You can turn it off if you don't want to. And so that's the filter side of it. Now comes the sort side. Some of you have been in EAM land for a long time. And your numbers, like maybe on your purchase orders and your work orders, have grown in the number of digits. And when you try to sort, you don't get all the way to where you want to go. And don't that tick you off? You know they did that just to aggravate you. So you might want to consider, instead of triggering on the work order number, maybe trigger on the created date. All right? That might work better for you. And then find out from your users, because your users, everybody's got an opinion. They might want it sorted ascending. They might want it sorted descending. Myself, I would prefer descending, but everybody's got an opinion on that one. Modify the layout of all 
global data spies to be consistent. This drives me crazy when I don't see that. You want, if that user is on open work orders, and he wants to take a dive into all work orders, make the layout the same. And it's easy to do. When you create a data spy, copy one that has that layout, give it a new name, and then modify it accordingly. Also, create global and global group data spies that follow your workflow. And that's real simple. It's like, OK, I've got open work orders I want to see and I got all work orders I want to see, and I got closed work orders I want to see, I want to see work requests. Find out what your business process is, how it can benefit from you creating data spies, global data spies for those users to use. Train users on making data spies, and you would not believe how many people I've seen go to create a data spy and they hit that new button, and I yell at them, and they look at me, and I say, hit copy. Copy what you already have to your new data spy so the layout will be consistent. Then do your modification go. Now, this is all old stuff for y'all, right? Y'all been down this road before? You know all this? I'm not telling you anything new? Oh, shoot, I'm wasting your time. Come on, it's going to get better. So this is where I'm talking about the layout. Um, carry the fields, the available fields, the ones that that user most likely is going to want, especially if he uh, exports to Excel, what fields likely are going to, you're going to want to see. Now, I know two fields off the bat, scheduled end date, I'm going to want that one, and I'm going to want assigned to. I, I know I'm going to want that one. but Try to figure out what the other fields are uh, and go to town. Fill it up. Make the layout useful for that user. Now, here's this is a little different right here. I'm, I'll be anxious to know if anybody's never heard about this one. There is, if you go to system codes, um, there's priority, well, there's priorities. So there's a priority icon and there's a status icon. You want those to be f visible fields. And when you move a priority icon over to the right and visible fields, you can take the priority and move it back over to available fields. You don't need it anymore. <coughs> Same thing with status icons. Move every field you can think of that may benefit your end user and repeat for all data spies to be consistent. <coughs> All right, when we're talking about system codes, everybody knows that you go to administration setup, system codes, you, you go on statuses, and you find uh, EVST. Everybody knows that the third letter is an S, and you pick up your system codes. But there is a field for you to put a color for that status. Now, that's kind of cool to give your user a visual indicator of the status of a work order. Because when he's looking at a screen with a whole lot of stuff on it, certain colors will stand out to him, unless, he's, unless, like, unless they're like my two sons that are both colorblind. Isn't that weird? But man, we got him some glasses one time that you can see colors, and it was like they were tripping on acid. They went, oh man, <laughs> this is really cool. Use the status icons. Now we have priority icons also. So take that priority field, move it over to the available fields, move priority icons into your list view or your layout, and there you go. Now I put you a little chart up here of the colors. Well, the next slide, anyhow. These are the colors because <laughs> I think we worked with these for about a year and said, what the hell is tar, tar main, tor main? What the hell is that? And <laughs> so. One of, my, one of my girls made me up this color chart right here to make it easy. If y'all want one, I'll send you one. Just ask me to, because I use it all the time. It's pretty handy. So if it's an urgent work order, yeah, make it red. So when he logs in and he sees red, he's going to attack the red till he gets it yellow and then till he gets it green. Icons in action. This is what my demo environment looks like. Um, we've got a priority icon 
certain color, and then we've got a status icon, a certain color. So you see two. And so you just have to remember the priority icon is the one on the left, and the status icon is the one on the right. And these visual indicators tell you what you got to do. So I would look down and I would see those red priority icons, and I would see that it's got a color saying, telling me probably that it's scheduled and ready to go. Uh, that helps your users. That helps your users a lot. And yeah, this is what I was talking about with priority icon and status icon. Make, put this in your layout on work orders so the users can see it when they're in list view. I, I was, uh, I'm kind of interested in uh, some users want the work order screen to load up expanded, right? And some don't care. But I've noticed my, my good users, my people that are really on top of their stuff, it generally loads up expanded right in a list so that they can see everything. All right, now I'm going to talk about Start Center. Now this drives me crazy. How many times have you brought on a new user and he logs in and he or she ain't got no color in their Start Center? Man, you wouldn't believe how many places I go and I see that's neglected. It, it hurts me. It pains me. I even have customers now that I work with all the time and their screens aren't fixed up like they should be. It's a matter of timing. It's a matter of when they're ready. Then we'll start cleaning up screens and make it mean something. So your inboxes, y'all know this probably as well as I do, your inboxes tell you account of certain conditions and you want to put a color code on those and you want to stay on top of this because once you get a user trained to keeping it green jack it up a little bit to where he's got to work harder to keep it green <laughs> <laughs> and then just keep keep raising the bar all right I'm serious you think I'm joking no you can have fun playing with your users with these uh, with these inbox items right here now, you know you've got, y'all know this, there's three tabs that you can put inbox items on. And I personally feel like if somebody needs that many places or that many inboxes, they're crazy. Uh, now, it's okay if you do it, but you might want to consider not checking the auto refresh so every time you get your start center, it takes 30 minutes for your page to load. That's, we found that at Bentley. They had all these KPIs, all these inboxes. They were wonderful. But just to get the start page load, loaded was like five minutes. You don't want to do that. That's how you tick off users. Train users on how to use screen cache. A couple weeks ago, we were at this awesome place, um, and they didn't know that. And you'd think they'd got died and gone to heaven when they found out they could do that. It is so cool that you can just get halfway through a work order and your boss call you and say, give me the status of the PO. And so you go into the PO and you tell him what he wants to know and you click on your little uh, thing down there on the bottom of the screen and go right back to where you were. Well, that was brilliant. That was absolutely brilliant, whoever came up with that. Now, inboxes... Um, make inbox items that drive interact, user interaction. Make use inbox ranges to guide their action. When they see red, that means you got to do something right now. Don't poke around. Red is a bad condition. Green is a good condition. It's, this is, believe it or not, rewarding your users for good behavior. All right. When they see their screen is green, they're going to think they're, they're on top of the world. Hyperlinks. Now, this is a, I, maybe one of you have the answer to this one right here. Uh, when you have an inbox item and it's saying late work orders and you double click on it and your filter takes you to those late work orders, what data spy do you use? All right. I'm of the belief that it's a good idea to make a blank data spy, that is a data spy that doesn't have any filters on it, but has the layout so that when you click from an inbox item and you go to this screen, you can look in your data spy field and see the word hyperlink 
or filter or no underscore name. Everybody, anybody seen that? Now, I know Kevin's not going to answer the question. How in the hell do you do that? I don't know. We found it works on KPIs, but it don't work on inboxes, so we'll figure that out someday. The point I'm trying to make is if your user goes to a screen by way of an inbox or a KPI, you need to give him a visual indicator that that's how he got there so he doesn't start searching for something while that filter is invoked. Because if he does, I'm going to quote one of my favorite customers, he will be like a three-legged cat on a hot tin roof trying to bury... <laughs> That's busy. Now, KPIs are cool, too. And I really like KPIs because you can have a number, you can have a, a tachometer, you can have a sliding bar. Make a collection of KPIs that show collective performance. All right, of a group, maybe the whole company, collective performance. Use KPI types and ranges to guide user action. If he sees he's getting behind on closing work orders, give him a visual indication that he's got overdue work orders that need to be dealt with. Develop a standard set of KPIs by user group. So if you've got a bunch of maintenance mechanics, you might want a collection of in KPIs that pertain to them. Information they need. Information that helps them get better at what they do. Place KPI items on the KPI tab of user setup. So what I'm talking about now is more instead of having to log in as that user or instruct that user how to put the inboxes or KPIs on a screen, uh, our buddies at Infor made them tabs on the user setup screen so that when you put it there, it's, it's there and that user can see it right away. Back in the day when I was uh, kind of brand new to MP5, well, pretty, I, had a, I had a customer that he ran around to all the supervisor's computers, and I'm saying, what are you doing? He says, I'm loading up their start center with inboxes and KPIs that I want them to have. And I said, that's crazy. Well, came back to my business, and we wrote some code to do that automatically. If you want that, I'll share it with you. And I'm saying develop flex to automate that process. So that's what we do. So what we do is the... Normally, it's an R5 user. It can be anybody in our R5 user group. We make our start center look like the one we want that maintenance tech to have, if you even go that far. And then we have a little code that we run that copies that over to that user's profile. We can get a whole group of people at one shot, but that's how we do it. That's the easy and quick way to do it. Make sure your filters work. Make sure your filters work. I have, I'm guilty of this that I've whipped out an inbox or a KPI and thrown it on the user and then he double clicks on it and it gives him the finger. That's my fault. I didn't double check it. So you've got to, do, you, like in some army colonel that I used to work with, you got to be ruthless. You got to make sure that those filters work. Administration screen configuration screens and we've talked about this already. Find out from your users how they want screens to load. Do they want purchase orders to be in expand right, which I'm still saying list view to this day? Do they want work orders to be expanded right? Find out what screens they want loaded in what way, and you accommodate that by going to administration screen configuration screens. Now, uh, you use screen permissions by user group to hide tabs that are not used. How many people have users that go to a work order screen and when they click on that more drop down there's at least 15 or 20 screens that they're never going to use. Get rid of them. Hide them. Now I don't think I put this one in my slide. I didn't. But my, my philosophy is when you take the R5 copy user group and you copy it to make another user group, you know, you're, you're dumbing it down. Um, 
never delete a screen from the menus. Hide them. Because if later down the road you want to kick them back in, they're where they're supposed to be. Now, I got all these people that move things around all over the place, and it just don't make sense to me. So my rule of thumb is don't delete them, just hide them. You hide a sub uh, menu, and it'll get everything up underneath it. And when you want to kick it in or bring it to life, it'll be right there where you want it. These are the two install parameters. Quick, y'all know this, quick def. Default value for the operator field on the quick filter portion of the search bar. C is for contains. Uh, my buddy over here on this side of the room, I'm not going to point him out, but he's sitting over there. He inherited an EAM system that they were using starts with. And I said, hey, you guys, let's change that. Let's make it contains. No. We don't want to do that. We like it with Start Center. Today it's contains. <laughs> uh, here's, a, here's a very important one right here, show query. Um, those are the multi-search fields, right? The, the black bar that's got a search field in each one, and each one has a contains or whatever operator you want to use, and so you can do multi-searches with those boxes. And I'm sure you all know this, you can hit F7 on your keyboard to hide them or F7 on the keyboard to bring them back to life. That's some of the old MP5 stuff we used to do. And there's actually a checkbox to show or hide, but I don't know why anybody would want to do it. I like seeing those multi-search fields. Now, I'm going to open it up to questions. First of all, how do I do? You guys, you guys know all this stuff, right? I didn't tell you anything you didn't already know, right? What, what I find is the system administrator, he's got other things to do. But the most important thing for that system administrator to do is to make his user's life as easy as possible. I can't preach that enough. That is the most important thing for a system administrator to do. Now y'all notice I didn't say anything about mobile, all right? That's a whole different world, but the, the rules apply. You need to make, you need to accommodate your users. Less clicks, make them not have to hunt for anything, give them the information where they can get it as soon as they want it, uh, and your life will be happier. Any questions? Thank you everybody. Thanks everyone.